Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Yunus. Um, that was thought provoking. I, uh, I'm glad that you reflected for us what what we mean by STEM. And interestingly, we had um, we wondered about this um, as we were drafting the the concept document because um, my staff member who was helping me went on the internet and. Um, and wrote that it's about integrating the four subjects and teaching it in an integrated way. In other words, she came across the conception, the fourth conception that you listed. Um, and then I, I corrected that or I changed that. I don't know what's correct, but I changed that and said, we're just referring to the four separate subjects in this case, because we want to be all inclusive. And that is a very specific teaching method. <laughs> so we actually came across it um and uh and I'm glad that you referred to that because it does seem that the discourse has has shifted gradually towards um defining stem in a very particular way. Thank you for that yeah welcome. I absolutely agree that it's about the quality of teachers and um that you have. Um, that you are in the hot seat, um, you and your colleagues, in the sense that you're having to equip them to go forward and teach their learners. It is certainly not an easy task. Um, the floor is open for questions. We've got a few minutes for that. Um, please put up your virtual hand by pressing the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. And... Uh, ask us a question. Then there's no um, open questions in the Q&A at the moment. Um, there are 96 people um, in the Zoom, which is wonderful. I'm very glad that all of you are here. Um, Hintza, Michlani. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, I've, I've managed to unmute myself. <laughs> uh, I, I just caught the the discussion by the prof. Uh, I think she's from VETS, you know, midstream. Uh, but I will, I, I will try and, and ask a question that has always been, you know, uh, banning in my mind. Uh, we... we <laughs> In my other life, we had discussions with uh, a, a number of schools of, of, of education from uh, the universities that are based in KZN. And the question we were asking is, given that teachers, only universities can train teachers now, uh, what is the typical science, maths, and, uh, and 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 technology teacher that an institution uh, intends to produce. If I were to go into a classroom where a teacher is teaching, would I be able to say that 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 that, that teacher comes from University X? That teacher comes from University One. Uh, Etc. And the I I, I think the, the the answers were very very and and, and worrying. And we were then taken back to uh, the autonomy of universities and institutions as institutions. That's what we were constantly reminded of. Now my my question to 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 the prof is. Uh, we talk about context, you know, the South African context, the whatever context. Uh, how big is the influence of context in in the mediation of of of, of or in teaching and learning? If a if a learner 
goes uh, to school within a particular context, whether it's poverty, this, that, and the other, how much influence does that have towards the, the, the failure and success of that learner? Thank you. Thank you very much for that question, Dr. Hinsa. Um, Prof. Yunus, would you like to answer that? Thank you. So, so the, the first thing that, that he, he raised about uh, autonomy of different uh, institutions, that is very true. And maybe it's, it's one of the things that requires discussion. We, we are guided by, by for example, Sakwa, the, the Mr. Tech, they have guidelines for us as teacher education institutions. But then from those guidelines, how we, 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 we try to achieve them, I think it differs from one teacher education institution to another. Mm -hmm. And so I cannot say we have, it, it would be very difficult to say, oh, this, is, this one is from PET, this one is from KZN, when you, you, you walk into the classroom. So, so that is my short answer to that. Then in terms of context, even with the Mr. Tech and the SACWA requirements, context is, 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 is very is, is highlighted strongly that we need to train our teachers for different contexts. And when we look at issues of inclusivity and diversity, the ideal is that, and equity, the ideal is that the context should not be a hindrance or a barrier to achieving success. So on paper, on the, the idea is that, but it's very difficult. It's very difficult. We, like in my presentation, I was saying, we are saying teachers should now do some online stuff, use digital. But context already tells us if they, not all schools have access to Wi-Fi. They have access to electricity. So why it is the ideal? This is not all. So, so definitely achievement. Even when we look at the, the students that we get, some have never been in a lab, but they wanted to be biology, physical science teachers. They've never seen a microscope. Later, they've never seen it or used it. And we have those who have been using for all the five years of their high school. So the ground is, is, is it, 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 it's not the same, it's not, uh, we still have those inequalities and barriers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Yunus, indeed. Um, we, uh, in, in SDF, we have a, a program for the, the matrix who uh, attained more than 90% for maths and science. And we select the top ones who have chosen to study further in STEM related courses, so including medicine and engineering. And uh, we find every year that um, about two thirds of them come from previously disadvantaged or, or from currently disadvantaged backgrounds. So they come from all schools. Um, we only take public schools and there are rural schools. There are um, all quintiles of schools. They uh, range from, you know, a quintile one, two, and three, up to five. Um, but the proportion in the lower quintiles is high. And that tells you that actually for, for some gifted learners, um, who of whom there are many, um, the context doesn't matter that much in their achievement. They just, they work hard and they're capable. And so they, they do get there. But um, I think that for um, perhaps l slightly less, less uh, talented learners, context would be could be crippling. And um, we have to be concerned about those learners and make sure that they have the best chance possible. Um, but you were talking about teachers. I think the same thing applies because um, some teachers succeed against the odds, no matter what context they come from. And um, and for others, it is a crippling reality that they have to, they have just too heavy a burden to work with. 
Yeah, you you can hear I kind of come from a, a, a teaching background myself. I care deeply about this. <laughs> um, yes, and it's crucial then to to have those kind of teachers. How do we motivate teachers? How do we help them to 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 succeed? Even yeah. in those in very difficult contexts. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. Um, Joyce West. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, Prof Yunus, I was inspired by your, your presentation. Thank you so much. I'm quite sick, so I hope you can hear me. Um, but I, even though I'm sick, I made sure that I'm attending your presentation today. Um, I wrote on one of the questions that you had on your slides, and it said, what does quality STEM education look like? And then I rephrased it for myself in the context that I work in. And I said, what does quality STEM education look like in early childhood education? And I was just like, your thoughts on that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so so it's it's actually as director of Marang, it's one thing that we 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 are concerned about actually from from the first point of view, because in most cases when we 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 look at STEM education, we are focusing on on secondary students more. Than 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 uh, uh, intermediate phase or even ECD, but when we look at countries where STEM education from 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 the <laughs> from the different conceptions, they start from ECD to really have structures in place mm. where where uh, the, they they are taught about uh, um, STEM. And uh, I don't have a, a, a clear description of how it will look like mm. at, at, at those levels. But what I've, I've witnessed uh, and as I interact with other science education scholars is that it can be taught at ECD mm. and, and the different approaches than approaches that are used at high school, approaches that are used at intermediate phase. But in STEM education can be achieved from ECD up to higher education, what needs to be considered is who the student, the level, and those approaches. And, and I think us as teacher education institutions, we need to, to have those in place to say, to, to, to prepare our ECD in teachers, our, our foundation phase teachers also, specifically for STEM education or STEM teaching and learning. I, I, I hope I answered your question. Thank you. I think we probably need us, because I love the word that you use, the sustainable frameworks. I think we'll probably need a framework that considers ECCE or early childhood education, because I think that is sustain, exactly. that is what's going to be sustainable if we start early, because I think that's where we are lacking. Thank you. Yes, exactly. Thank, Thank you. you very much for that thought, Joyce. Um, Tawanda Chiningundu. Hello, good Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Uh, I, I, I like the question that is put, put across there. How do we achieve teacher quality? That is a, a, a very pregnant question because teacher quality is especially for STEM, looking in the context that we are talking about, the South African context. We, if we are, I, I am a teacher educator, and when I look at this, the students that we recruit, we are taking those ones that have remained from the medicine that you've been talking about, that have been remained from the, the engineering that we, we are taking those with lower passes. And then, in that context, then, how do we then achieve the teacher quality? Because we are taking students who have failed to get into this other into this other stream, and then they come into teacher education. So there is a lot of things that we also need to do as teacher educators to attract talent in teacher education, so that we also have to compete with those who want to go to medicine, so that they want to come to teaching. Because if we are having those ones who have failed to, to achieve in these other very highly natural scientific fields, then we take those ones. 
it becomes very difficult for us to achieve teacher quality in STEM. Because those students, when you relate issues like you are talking about, I am uh, a lecturer in engineering, graphics, and design. We will talk about the chemistry of the materials that are going to be used if they are going to design a particular component. They want to know the chemistry. They want to know the geography. We are talking of the civil technology, the, the, the site plans, everything. They want to integrate those things, but they don't have those basics. And you will find those students, they are now coming there. So our teacher quality needs to be looked at from a broader perspective where we are talking of the teacher educators. We, or teacher education institutions also have a mammoth task to ensure that they attract talent in their fields. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, Tawanda. Um, would you like to respond briefly, Eunice? Yes, I, I agree with Tawanda 100%. Um, I, I hosted a colleague from, from Germany. And in Germany, the, 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 the lowest qualification, the, the qualification that you need to become a, 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 a STEM education teacher is master's mm. in the field, master's in biology, master's in physics, master. And in addition to that, they're actually the highest paid. And therefore, the, the education attracts the cream, just like medicine, just like engineering. And it's something that we need to consider. Because at the end, we want quality passes for medicine. We want quality passes for engineering. But we are not demanding quality passes for those who prepare our students for medicine and engineering and everything else. And this is something that really needs to, to be considered if we are to so I agree in short I agree with with, with Tawanda in addition something also is that the reference to stem identity there's no way our learners can develop stem identity when they are doing seven eight subjects up to matric it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a general identity so something also to consider to say how do we if I look at my own, I, I did physics, chemistry, biology, and math for two years, just doing those four subjects. I had done the others for four years, and then two years only of doing the STEM subjects. And I'm very comfortable when, when, when I'm, I'm teaching biology, I know about the physics concepts that are needed, the math concepts. So it's also something to think about. How do we develop that STEM competence, STEM identity with the, our learners doing so many subjects up to matric? Do they have enough time to develop those competences that we need in preparation for their vocational and the tertiary education? Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Nyamupa, um, for um, leading us in this um, consideration of these important issues.